So in this segment, we're going to be talking about millions of daffodils will rot if Brexit denies UK farmers foreign workers. So the UK, you know, especially in the agriculture sector, um, well, I guess in every sector really, is reliant on um, you know foreign workers. You know, it's not a shock, um, especially with work you know that is very labour intensive and doesn't pay that well. Brits don't really want to do it. It's not even just the not paying well bit. It's, I think it's the labour intensive bit um, when it comes to working in the fields. Especially when, um, you know, it's in what, January where the weather's really bad in the UK. So, millions of daffodil stems will be left to rot in the fields this spring as growers face a critical labour shortage that they fear could spell the end of the entire industry. Now, I didn't know daffodils were that popular in the UK and I didn't know that so many were grown here. I thought they were not the best looking um, plants, but uh, more for me. So... Um, this is from James Hosking, who works in a farm. I think he's the part owner of a farm in Cornwall. Saying, if we can't recruit more pickers, there won't be a daffodil industry left, and the situation is very grim. And this is a direct result of the end of freedom of movement. Some growers expect up to 75% of their um, crop will be left unpicked. Like, in what industry can you lose 75% of what you are selling and still be viable? Especially given that they still had to plant these. That comes at a massive labour cost. In what industry can you lose 75% of your product? You can't. It's unsustainable. Many smaller growers are planning to give up on daffodil growing entirely, which attempts to recruit local failings uh, to bring in enough people to the fields. Well, you know, Brexiteers said British people replaced um, EU workers. Where are they at? Honestly, where are they? I don't, I don't see any. <sighs> Cornwall's mild climate and light intensity um, make it the heart of the uk's 100 million pounds industry with around 80 percent of the world's daffodils grown in the duchy so that's 80 percent of the world's daffodils are grown in cornwall which is crazy um think that 80 percent of a product can be grown in one country harvesting begins in the first week of january and a workforce of around 2500 people is needed to pick over a billion stems so it's a lot of work a lot of people 2500 that's a that's a that's a large amount over the past couple of decades, growers have relied on Eastern European labour to do the back-breaking work of picking each daffodil by hand in all weathers. I mean, the only option they would have is really raising the wages of the uh, workers, but um, you know, if they do that, that increases the cost of daffodils and has knock-on effects. But um, evidently, that's the only choice they're going to have. But then, even then, they still can't get the workers, so what can they do? The end of free movement following Brexit and COVID restrictions, however, made the 2021 spring season one of the toughest ever for recruiting workers. Around 275 million stems were left in the ground this coming season. It looks set to be more challenging. I mean, I mean they're done, aren't they? They're, they're, I mean, that industry is going to tank. If only 50% is picked this spring, the following spring you're looking at 25% of that, and that means you're out of business. The Hosking, as said Hosking, who is the fourth generation of his family to grow daffodils at Fenton Gullen. And you've got to think, right, fourth generation farmer, you know, fourth generation this farmer's been in the family, gone. You know, they're going to have to grow something else or sell up. There'll be no alternative but to stop growing daffodils. That's the end of an industry the UK leads the world in. And, you know, you can they can talk about, uh, you know, exp you know um, sort of rest of the world and all this stuff. But the thing is, they're not getting a they're not able to get the staffing they need to actually um, pick these plants. So it doesn't even matter about rest of the world and emerging markets and all this nonsense because they can't even get the product off the ground. Daffodils are a symbol of spring. They bring people cheer and hope when the days are still gloomy. I mean, do they really, though? Do they really? I'm more of a rose guy myself. You can't import daffodils from anywhere else. Cornwall is the only place you can grow them at this time of year. Now, the Netherlands is a big grower of uh, daffodils, I believe, as well. So you can't grow them anywhere else at this time of year. True, but it seems more of a technicality than anything. But if you can't harvest your crop, you got you haven't got a business. Full stop. True that. You know, basics. Hosking said the owners of Varfel Farms in Penza Penzance, one of the largest growers in the country, they said they have tried to recruit locals, but with very limited success. Like because like I said, locals don't want to do this work. Varfel recently held an open day at the farm that was widely publicised on local social media groups and newspapers. Only four people turned up. So I guess those are the four Brits we were promised that would replace this 2,500 uh, people workforce. Embarrassing. 
Hosking also struggles to employ locals. We have always ha we always have three or four local pickers, but we need 60. At the moment, I have about 20 most uh, people, 20 mostly people who return to us every year who already have settled status to be in the UK. He said so. They've got 20 people. Shy, they need 40 more, and those 20 people they have already have settled status in the UK. So getting the rest of the the 40 they need is going to be trouble. I mean, very difficult for them, especially since of the local populace, they only managed to get four people. Um, so they go on to say the best pickers can up, earn up to thirty pounds an hour, and the average wage at Verfell last spring was fourteen pounds an hour, which is higher than minimum wage, but not by much. Um, and you talk about the average, so some people would be making probably eight or nine pounds an hour for you know genuinely labour intensive work. Um, maybe that's one of the issues they're facing. But outdoor working in all weathers is not proving attractive. Many farms are also remote, needing its workers to live on site, which, you know, it's not appealing to a lot of people. These are seasonal jobs that cannot be uh, mechanised and are not attractive to the lo um, local labour workforce. So, you know, what are you going to do then? If you can't get foreign people to do the work, you can't get local people to do the work because they don't want to, you're out of luck. The government has promised to extend a visa scheme allowing farmers to bring in seasonal workers from overseas. At the moment, it only applies to fruit and vegetables with non-edible crops excluded. Kevin Foster, MP, the local immigrant, sorry, the immigration minister, however, last week told MPs on the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Committee that non-edible crops will be added to the seasonal agricultural workers scheme. And the, the thing that annoys me, I think, not the thing that annoys me the most about this government, but one of the things that really frustrates about this government is why are they so reactive you know they're never proactive with anything be it you know the pandemic or brexit or anything like that you know they're never proactive like surely when you're having discussions earlier on in the year you've got to think all right uh we need to uh we need more people to come in to do farm work because local people don't want to do it and then so you know farmers and you know the nfu are like oh look you know why don't you just you know allow visas so foreign people come and do it and the government are like no nah, british people will do it and they're like they're not though like it's not going to happen and uh, the, the the government this, i think the most frustrating thing of most governments is that um you know, they're very reactive not proactive at all and that's where you get problems like a lot of these say, say if these visas come into place in midway through january end of january that's when they'll most likely happen it will still take weeks for people to actually apply for these visas and actually get here weeks or to a month you've missed the season you missed harvesting season because it sounds like january is the time they're going to pick most of the crop so i mean it's done there it's, it's already too late well, with just two weeks to go until picking is due to start and no formal announcement grow, um, announcement growers say they need to start recruiting now if they are to save this year's harvest. But again, you know, the government haven't actually done anything yet. If next week the government announced a visa scheme that includes ornamental crops, we could potentially get up to speed with recruitment by early February. At least then the industry has a future. But, you know, picking is going to start in two weeks, right? So when was this article written this article was written on the 18th okay so today's the 28th yes i'm late okay leave me alone so the 18th right so picking is going to start literally the first week of january they're saying if they start you know if they start getting the visas up by february then they've got a chance but surely it's over then it's, it's already over because you're meant to start picking crops in the next week or so right depending on when this video goes out it might be that they have to start just as the video goes out by February, surely it's too late. You're going to lose a lot of crop. Maybe they're thinking, uh, look, if we break even this year, then next year we'll be better because then the government won't be absolute clowns and um, we'll like, um, won't be absolute clowns and we'll actually sort out a proper working visa scheme. But I don't think that's going to work. And you know what? The country that benefits from this really is the the Netherlands because the Netherlands actually grow a lot of daffodils and things like that. You know, this website is not sponsored. Dutch daffodils. Um, you know the the Dutch actually grow some really um you know they have um you know little street markets with uh, daffodils. I've been to one um, when I went to Amsterdam. It was really nice. Um, my friend uh, she bought a lot of daffodils to grow at home. I think because they had like starter packs and stuff. But um yeah you know the Netherlands might become more of a daffodil kind of powerhouse. I guess you know if the UK is exporting eighty percent of the world's daffodils, you've got to think like the UK's daffodil industry crumbling is going to massively benefit the Dutch, as Brexit has done. You know, it's benefited them a lot. I mean, these pink ones are really nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, we go on. Look at that. You know, all of Cornwall's MPs, all Tories. Cornwall, one of the poorest areas of the UK, I believe, which, re you know, received a lot of EU funds. I think it was about 100 million a year or something like that. They're releasing, they're getting only about 1 to 3 million. 
so you know they've already lost out now their farmers are going to struggle a lot more which is going to have knock-on effects on the um the local economy in cornwall look at that all six tories got steve D double Cherilyn mccroy mcrory mcroy i don't know how to pronounce that cheryl murray scott mann Derek thomas and of course the minister for um rural affairs or defra george eustace the guy who's caught helping to cause these problems is from the local area, George Eustace. George Eustace should be hit, you know, should be hammering the door of Pretty Patel saying, yo, look, we've got a problem here, man. You've got to sort this out right now. He should be hammering the door of the immigration uh, minister saying, yo, I've got a problem in my constituency. You guys need to sort this now that we're going to have crops that are going to be unpicked and it's going to cause massive problems for my constituents. But no, he's not and he won't. And it's just a joke. And... This is my reaction to, you know, waiting for farmers to actually do something. Like, your industry's been absolutely knackered. You're talking about a fourth generation farmer. Right? Imagine, right, which I can't do because I'm not that lucky, but imagine a farm or anything being in your ge your family for four generations. That must be, what, like 70 odd years or something, 80 odd years? That's been in your family, you know, gone. Essentially, it's going to go bankrupt. This industry will go bankrupt. And you might be able to grow something else. Who knows? But the thing you're growing, the thing that your family was known to grow, is going to be dead. That industry is going to be dead. And what are you guys going to do about it? I see, you know, the minor kind of crappy protests from farmers. But, like, this is the end of your industry. And you guys are, like, treating it like a joke. Like, oh, you know, if we don't get the workers we need, oh, we're going to go bankrupt. And isn't that really sad? Like, why don't you take a leaf out of the French farmer's, um, you know, book and actually do something? You know, actually really protest about this because you're in trouble if this thing goes under what are you going to do next you know I'm, i i am getting bored of just dunking on people for how they voted in 2016 the question now is what are you going to do about it because your industry has been hit it's been hit badly you're talking about bankruptcy you know an industry that britain actually le leads in it's going to be overtaken by the dutch probably at some point shocker there but what are you guys going to do about it that's the question and if you're not going to do anything then this is kind of what you deserve because your industry on mass voted for this so it's time for you guys to actually step up and do something but um yeah anyways i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in the next one